Hi everyone, today let's talk about Uber earnings. Do me a quick favor and like and subscribe and watch the video till the end to help out the channel and let's get started. So Uber announced earnings here today and company revenue grew by 15% to $10 billion. It always surprises me that Uber is this big of a company making $10 billion in revenue, but somehow they are still losing money, 32 cents per share versus 23 cents per share. Definitely not what you would want to see, but the revenue growth is good. This still is a growth company. The question is, when are they going to be profitable for four consecutive quarters? That is generally a good metric for the long-term investor, but this is still a growth company company and it is growing so that's generally good you can also see they had 2.6 billion trips this year which is up 21 percent year over year so again platform is growing they also had 17.7 billion bookings for delivery don't forget uber does have uber eats as well as uber grocery and both of those segments are growing as well Moving over to fear and greed, you can see still at a 39, really hasn't moved, still in greed here for momentum, still in extreme fear for strength, breath still hovering, volatility did drop off a little bit more here today, I think that's going to spike up soon, and then bonds still mixed, greed and extreme fear between the two. Moving over to seasonality, you can see the 8th, it was supposed to be generally flat, maybe a little bit up, and that's basically what we got, and then looking at tomorrow and the end of the week, it's supposed to be quite bearish, we'll see how that plays out, still expecting this dip low here in the middle of the month. Moving over to earnings, you can see Uber, a $138 billion company, beating on the top line, missing on the bottom, and then you can see Trade Desk beating on both, definitely good for them. Airbnb, surprise beat there, almost doubling earnings estimates. And then looking at tomorrow, pretty much just Warner Brothers there and then Home Depot for Tuesday of next week. Moving over to the economic calendar, you can see the 10-year note auction actually came in lower than the previous read. Pretty interesting, continuing to see yields roll to the downside. Tomorrow, 30-year note bond auction, would expect that to come in a little bit lower as well. Initial jobless claims at 8.30, and then Fed balance sheet after hours. Moving over to Max Payne, you can see current stock price 5.17, Max Payne at 5.12.50. Got some decent spikes in here now, 5.10, 5.15, probably gonna finish between those if we finish at the top of the puts that would be about 519 520 i don't think we're going to get that strong of a finish put call ratio is going a little bit higher here at 1.7 now you can see all of those puts entering the market definitely interesting but remember there's not a ton of options going into this expiration moving over to the charts very similar thesis to yesterday we did dip low in the morning like i thought we were going to but then we rallied right back hit the trend line hit the resistance and then we're selling a little bit after hours so structurally still broke broken still showing flat price action but that 55 on the hourly chart that's the level to watch right now 515 48 once that breaks then we're headed to these lower lows but for now seems like we have maybe one more day one more half a day or so of potentially holding up at that 55 ema and you can see it here on the daily chart as well confluence of trend lines definitely showing resistance definitely extended and eventually it'll break down in my opinion just waiting for that final move and it does seem like it's set to come either pre-market tomorrow or mid-session. Moving over to the daily chart, you can see that same thesis as yesterday. Still at ATR resistance, 517.97. Couldn't get above it again here today. Momentum basically flat from yesterday. Waiting to see if this is going to break down from that level. At this point, I still think it's going to happen. You can see four-hour chart, sideways choppy action, still sitting on top of that 8 EMA at 516.70. ATR support, 513.50. And then looking at that hourly chart, at this point, you are Technically in bearish conditions after that move here this morning, hit that lower ATR band, bounced right back into the middle of the range, took out the ATR stop. So now on the hourly, we are in bearish conditions and that trailing stop is at the same position as the daily chart, 517.97. So confluence of resistance there and you would expect that to continue to hold in my opinion. Moving over to the NASDAQ, similar thesis to the SPY, dip low, hit the 55. Again, watching that very closely, that's at 438.87, need that to hold. Tested that same level here as well, 438. If that 55 breaks, I think we're headed much lower, at least in the short term. And you can see this high here today actually was not as high as yesterday's high. We did not all the way test that 441.81 level. So that doesn't look great either. Technically bearish on the day, 0.06. Momentum hasn't broken down yet. 
daily chart momentum waiting for that step down. So we might see a little bit more consolidation here. One, maybe one and a half days, see how it plays out. But right here, I am expecting resistance. It seems to be coming in so far, but structurally not broken yet on that hourly chart. Moving over to the tasty charts on the daily, you can see we are still at that ATR resistance, 440.53, tested that level again here today. Again, could not close above it. So you have bearish conditions still on the daily chart. Lower high establishing, in my opinion, waiting for this to roll to the downside. It's not doing it quite yet. Four hour chart pulling back in time, almost to the middle of the range, technically below that eight EMA. Doesn't look good there either. ATR support 435.41. So might see that initial dip low, catch a bounce from there, and then we'll see how it plays. But right now, bearish momentum on the four hour chart. Again, still looks to me like it's going to be headed lower. And then looking at the hourly, what an interesting move here. So we did take out the ATRs to the downside on that down move. Then we hit the 55 EMA at 438. Again, we talked about that on the trading view charts. That is your current support. So we are still above that here on the tasty charts. But on that up move, you can see we took out the ATR resistance here as well. So we got a choppy price action, sideways looking market still bouncing in either direction. And you do have bullish conditions here. ATR support would be 437.04. Pretty much sitting right on top of that 89 EMA down there at 436.71. Moving over to the Russell and the Dow, you can see the Russell was down 0.58. So that actually moved a lot more in line with what I was looking for based off yesterday's charts. You can see that big wick rejection, big move down. You would have expected the move down, and sure enough, we did. We didn't get all the way down to the 55 at 202.19 or support at 201.88. And then we did catch a little bit of a bounce into the mid-session. But look at this Dow, 0.45 to the upside, absolutely massive. Looks way better than everything else. Breaking above that highly traded zone, next resistance would be 392.44. Clearly the most bullish of the group by far. Momentum and RSI both looking good there. Looking at the Russell, you can see that step down on momentum on the daily. That's not great. Typically, that means we're going to see selling coming in. Let's take a quick look at that four hour chart. So you can see the rally up, big wick rejection yesterday, continued down in that price action. So that's where we found support at the 200 there, 202.46. And then we got some sideways choppy price action. But really what I want to talk about here is the reason that I did sell some puts in the mid session here was this low, slightly higher low setup. Looked like it was going to break out and then we sold back down to view up in the 8 EMA. So a little bit of mixed signals here on the Russell. It was down and it still looks a little bit weak, but we did establish a mid-session higher low. And you do have to respect that 21 EMA as resistance on the hourly chart, 203.95. Moving over to Trade Desk and Uber for stocks that moved here today. You can see Trade Desk was down 4.04%. Not a great day. You can see it topped out at 91.43. I don't follow these stocks super closely, so I added all of this stuff here today. So definitely not a four Forecast, but you can see we topped out here, started to pull back. You have some potential for support at 83.10, took out this trend line here. But if you look at the 12 hour chart, you can see that earnings report did spike it back up to 87.44. So it's right at that trend line. We'll see how it plays. Momentum and RSI looks bearish on both of these here still on the daily and the 12 hour. And then looking at Uber, massive move down on that earnings, 5.72%, took out that trend line, hit the 144 here on the daily chart. Momentum rolling to bearish, RSI breaking down. It was already oversold on this previous move down, and it seems like it's set to go lower, in my opinion. Longer time frame, let's look at that for a second. You can see it's still on a very bullish trajectory. We have seen pullbacks like this before, touched that 144, rallied up to $80. And since then, we've pulled back down into the 60s. We're testing that 144. We'll see if this continues that longer term trend. But right now, it does look weak, and that catalyst of earnings is not a great indicator of bullishness to come. Moving over to the MAG7, basically the same thesis as yesterday, slightly different down 0.05 momentum still bullish our size still hanging out there still looks like a lower high setup thought this might push to that 367 level these previous highs but right now it seems to be topping out like everything else still hanging in there but probably going to roll to the downside next support would be 349.21 then we'll see what happens from there and if we look at this on the hourly chart it looks very similar to the nasdaq slowly trending down hit the 55 found some support technically already below it on the hourly chart which is not great momentum and rsi are bearish so probably going to head down to that zone maybe tomorrow maybe the next day 
Moving over to Apple and Tesla, 0.19 here to the upside for Apple, still holding that level just barely, 182.37, critical zone, continues to test that level. As long as this holds, we're still good. So it could be just a pullback in time at support, and then we'll see what happens. But it is sideways choppy price action for sure. You can see it here on the four hour chart, big move on their earnings on buyback news, sideways choppy price action right at support, slightly bearish momentum. And then looking at Tesla here, you can see big gap down, 1.74% to the downside. We said it looked super weak yesterday at 3.76 to the downside. Took out that trend line, sat right at support, gapped through it. Now your support is 167.34. This might be sideways price action here at this point. So we've had a massive move down, went from about 260 down to about 140. So it's a big move for Tesla for sure. Definitely hit oversold conditions, hit a major trend line had the earnings it's pulling back a little bit but it seems like this is the zone where we could find some support 167.34 seems like a good level you got VWAP and the 21 hanging in there and doesn't look terrible moving over to Tesla on the tasty charts I just wanted to give this a look so we are in bullish conditions on the daily chart which is good so you can see that move down the same one from before bearish conditions throughout then we took out those ATRs here on the end of April and earnings rallied super strong on that earnings up to 198.42. Now we're pulling back, we're in the middle of the range. So if we're gonna find support, seems like a reasonable place to do it. You can see that previous consolidation. You can also see ATR support sitting down there at 153.71. So that is a little bit of a long way to go. And it could absolutely get down to that zone, find support, and then push higher if it's going to do it. So far away stops on the daily chart. Let's see if we can find anything better on the shorter time frames, hourly chart, not super great here. So bearish conditions on the hourly. You can see we took out that here on the four o'clock candle on May 7th. Since then, it's been downtrending pretty aggressive. You can see that big dip low early in the session, got some of that back, but it's still downtrending. Doesn't look super great. Slightly bullish on the daily chart. You would want to wait for this hourly chart to turn around and then have both of those headed in the same direction. Otherwise, moving over to Meta and Netflix, neither of these stocks seem to care about anything that's going on to march higher every single day 9.93 percent for meta 0.57 here for netflix touch that for 614 level we talked about that yesterday i believe it's been on the charts for a long time finally hit that level after testing my previous level right at this last consolidation 551 hit that on earnings bounce right back so that looks strong strong demand there for netflix and then similarly here on meta big gap down on earnings seems to be moving higher resistance at that 21 ema on the daily chart is a little bit concerning you can see it here 475 72 interesting zone need it to push through that if it's going to do it seems like it will momentum is bullish rsi has plenty of room before we hit overbought conditions if that breaks your next price target would be 489.67 Moving over to staples and discretionaries, staples pulling back a little bit, 0.3 after the really powerful day yesterday. Discretionaries continuing to dump here, 0.38, got all the way down to 176.92 at one point, momentum rolling to bearish, we'll see how that plays. Still looks like risk off to me, but we're not really accelerating to the downside quite yet. Still have the 21 in VWAP as support there at the 175.60 area, and then my next level, 174.76. Otherwise, staples probably headed to that 77. 50 area in my opinion moving over to financials and utilities we talked about these yesterday looking strong and they were both strong here today again 0.36 on financials still headed that 4165 level in my opinion momentum rsi still looks strong you can see this low higher low setup everything looks good but look at this on utilities absolutely colossal so we had a bottom like everything else mid-february and actually that true bottom was early in october everything else kind of bottomed around the end of october had that rally and it pulled back probably deeper than some of the other charts, but look at this run here, super massive. Went from 62.84 all the way up to 72.27. Huge move for utilities, and it continues to break higher. Took out my 70.07 level. Next one would be 71.83. And if that happens, we're gonna have to start adding some new levels here because we could be headed back to those September highs up around $77. This is colossal for sure. Super overbought, but you definitely don't wanna get in the way of this. You wanna trade with it. And it looks very strong. Moving over to breadth, 20 day breadth, inch higher just slightly on the Wednesday session. 50 day breadth rejecting off that 52.81 level. We talked about that being resistance. Could just be a slight pullback, just like this. Pulled back, found support, rallied up. If it continues to trend higher, no problems at all. But we might see a short term pullback here after that slightly bearish candle, inside candle. 
but 20 day breadth is still showing bullishness. Moving over to the dollar, the dollar basically consolidated on the day. You can see we hit that upper trend line, hit the 200 on the hourly chart, consolidated, seems like it's selling off a little bit, slightly bearish conditions there on the daily, on the hourly chart. Daily chart, you can see we're still in this kind of consolidation, super long bull flag at this point. And we've actually faked out in both directions. So we had a fake breakout here, fake breakdown here. Now we're back in the middle of the range testing that upper area. At this point, you would expect it to break lower off of that resistance, but momentum says this could break higher. So watching this one closely again tomorrow, critical zone for the dollar. If it breaks out, equities are headed lower. If it breaks down, we should see a little bit more bullishness. Moving over to yields, you can see two year still doing its thing, hanging out at support 4.8. Momentum starting to roll to bullish a little bit. Similarly, on the 10-year, we've had two days slightly rolling to bullish. We got the auction here today, and it was right around that 4.48 area. So yield sitting at about 4.5. Might see a slight pullback here. We'll see how that plays. Could absolutely establish a lower high. Still have resistance there at 4.55. But does seem like we might see just a little bit of a bounce here on yields. Moving over to bonds, JNK moved a little bit lower. So that fits. Momentum rolling down, RSI rolling down. We'll see how it plays. Does look slightly better bearish at least in the near term and that should be bearish for equities and then looking at TLT the same as what we said yesterday so we rallied up to resistance expected the rejection sure enough we got it now this is probably headed back down to that 89.16 area confluence of EMAs and VWAP in that zone if it holds that support we could head higher and that fits with a slight rally in yields and then a lower high setup and a breakdown seems like this is probably going to go higher but might need to be a little bit patient over the next day or two. Moving over to volatility, move index, not doing much of anything, still looks a little bit bullish. VIX, on the other hand, continues to crater, headed towards that 12.75 area. Got maybe one more day till we get there. Once we touch that, we'll see what happens. Last time we got here, we had about five days of consolidation at that level, and then we spiked higher. See if that happens again, critical zone here. And like I said, probably one more day until we at least touch that level. Moving over to my accounts, you love to see it made about $200 on the day and both of the markets were down that I was in so IWM down about a half a percent Q's down just a smidgen they're down a little bit more after hours but I did hold on to some positions I got into this 203 at a little bit cheaper price for about 50 cents pretty comfortable there at least in the short term again still watching these very closely if they hit my triggers I will absolutely be out of these positions as I do think we could see a deeper pullback once we structurally break down and that hasn't happened quite yet maybe one more day like I said and then Q's position pretty much the same premise got a 439 put for about a dollar so a dollar out of the money for about a dollar credit then I have a 442.5, two calls there for the Friday session, made some money on that, everything looks good. Then I have a call here, 435 for the Friday session on those shares, pretty much just sitting on that waiting for that theta to come in. So slow drip of profits while we are in this sideways choppy market. Let me know down in the comment section what you think of Uber. Is it a stock to be in? Is it a stock to trade? Is it going to bounce off of those levels that it's at basically right now? Or is it structurally going to break down? Definitely like and subscribe if you got any value out of this video and make sure you hit the bell so you don't miss out on any future episodes. Of course, none of this is financial advice. This is all for entertainment purposes. Good luck in your trading and have a great day.